Hey, it's Alex Williams of the New Stack here today with Brad Mickley of Code Envy. Hey, Brad. Hi, Alex. How are you? Good. Uh, today, Brad, you're going to show us the Code Envy platform, as I understand. That's right. Yeah, and a little bit on kind of how to use it and uh, where it fits into the enterprise workflow. Great. Well, let's just get started. Awesome. Okay. So just to start off, uh, Code Envy creates containerized developer workspaces on demand. And what that means is that we're essentially taking everything you would do on a developer's laptop and putting it into a container so that it can be collaborated on, shared, secured, centrally managed. So when you look at a particular workspace in the Code Envy definition, it includes a number of different projects. Each can be connected to you know, a number of different repos. Mm. Underneath that, there are one or more run times, which are necessary in order to be able to build, run, debug that particular project. Now, every developer can have multiple workspaces, and multiple workspaces can live inside of a Code Envy node. So as we move down, we can connect to them through the Code Envy IDE, which I'll show you a little bit of today. You can kind of pull them locally, if you will, into a, an Eclipse Che instance that is sitting on your, on your laptop. And of course, Eclipse Che is the open source project, which is kind of at the heart of Code Envy. Or you can use SSH to connect to that workspace from your desktop IDE if you prefer to use that. All of these workspaces and the nodes within Code Envy are controlled by central IT, so they can be secured, uh, resources can be properly managed, um, and they can be elastically scaled. So why containerize workloads? Well, I think there's a lot of good reasons. Um, one of the reasons is, of course, that if I do that, I'm securing the IP much better than I could on a local machine. Typically, IT is struggling to find a way to properly secure all the laptops. If a developer loses their laptop, so goes the IP in most cases. In a centrally hosted Code Envy environment, although I use it from my laptop or any other device, the IP never leaves that central hosted system, so it's more secure. The other thing is it's more collaborative. Um, these workspaces, once they're containerized, can be very easily replicated and shared. So once I get the project working perfectly on my machine, I can take that workspace and share it with everybody else on my team. If there's 20 people, I just save 20 people an hour or more each to configure their machine. Um, it's more flexible. I can use it from a Chromebook. I can use it from a laptop. I can use it from a desktop. I can kind of be anywhere and on any machine and still have access to it. So it makes me kind of much more efficient that way. And then what I'll show a little bit in the demo is the way that when you kind of extend it even further forward, you can programmatically update these workspaces and you get into kind of task-based workspaces, which mm. is something you really can't do today. So... Let's, uh, let's jump in. Um, what these workspaces uh, kind of end up being uh, used as is, is kind of used as URLs. So behind each one of these tiles is a little launch workspace button, which really is just pointing to a basic URL. That URL goes back to the Code Envy system and requests a particular kind of JSON configuration file for one of these Code Envy workspaces tailored to these particular projects. So let's go ahead and open one. I'm going to use the Vaudin example. Now that URL you can see at the top, again, going back to Code Envy, you're gonna see in a second, first thing we do is create a Docker container. We're gonna put that Docker container, um, the Linux OS, uh, all the Java, in this case, uh, infrastructure that's needed, the JDK, uh, Maven, et cetera. We inject a Code Envy workspace agent into that container so that we can control the life cycle of that container. We don't really want devs to have to worry about starting, stopping, snapshotting workspaces. They should be able to just focus on doing the dev and we can take care of that. Once the container is loaded, uh, then we push a lightweight browser-based uh, IDE um, based on Eclipse Che up to the user's browser. You can see I've pulled in the source code here. Um, I've got you know, my palm.xml uh, that I can look at here to see how my project is constructed. I could open up the source code, um, all the things that, uh, that I would do in any, of course, standard IDE. Now, at the same time, this project has already been automatically built and run, and that's kind of a configuration I can do within the workspace. So when I click this preview URL, it's going to open up this application running in the Jetty container inside my personal Docker workspace. So I do that, and here comes my app. I can interact with it, filter the contents. It doesn't look like there's anybody named Brad, so there's obviously something wrong with this address book. Um, and I can go back and change that. 
Mm -hmm. Now, in addition to all these things, of course, I've got a full Git menu. I can do things like, uh, you know, if I go back to my Palm, I can do a Git compare, see what happened since I last updated. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see some pretty substantial changes to the Palm XML. So that's good if I needed to roll back. And of course, I've got a lot of code assist um, capabilities as well. If I jump into the Java file, I come down. I've got you know autocomplete. I've got syntax highlighting and, and correction. I've got uh, refactoring, et cetera, et cetera. And then kind of last but not least, of course, is I have access to a terminal. So I can have root access inside this container, do whatever I want, um, and really you treat it exactly as I would my local host. Now let's imagine I made some changes and I wanted to issue a pull request back to this repo. Um, I, of course, could, in an enterprise scenario, I'd probably just push. But let's see what the pull request looks like. With a pull request, I can configure my pull request, I can enter a title, some comments, and I can create my PR. When I do that, what's kind of nice is that we push that pull request back to GitHub, uh, whether this is a private GitHub enterprise or public GitHub out on the net. And we drop in a little badged button called Reviewer Workspace. What we've done here is we've packaged up this particular change done by this particular developer into its own workspace formula. So now as a reviewer or you know, whether I'm doing code reviews or what have you, I don't have to worry about changing branches and trying to figure out where the right code is for my code review. I can just click this link. And again, it's going to open up another browser-based IDE instance for me specific to that issue. Now, making these, uh, these factories, as we call them, these URLs, is really simple. Once I get the project running in Code Envy, I go into the factory section. I choose the particular um, workspace that I want to turn into a factory that I want to share with other people. I hit next, and that's about it. I got to give it a name. I could type in you know whatever name I wanted here, um, and then I can copy this URL. And anybody who uses this URL now is going to get their own isolated Docker container with an exact replica of this project. So it's a, again a really fast way for me to onboard new devs into the project, uh, do code reviews. I can even use this as a really kind of nice way to interview incoming dev candidates. I can give them a little tech challenge, give them this URL and uh, on any machine, they'll be able to go in and I can check their work. So that's kind of one way to share. Now the other way you can share uh, is I can of course invite somebody into this exact workspace. So if I give them this URL, which is a different one, now they're going to be inside my personal Docker container. Now we can almost do pair programming. Oh, uh, interesting. Both, yeah, both be doing work on the same thing at the same time. So you can see the code simultaneously, and, and is it real-time editing then? Uh, so we're just about to release uh, some updates that will give uh, dual cursor support, so you'll be able to kind of see where the other person is. Oh, that's sweet. So you can do that, so you can do the pair programming remotely, really. Yeah, exactly. That's right. You don't need to be sitting side by side. That's awesome. Now, the last kind of sharing, which is kind of cool, is you can grab, of course, this preview URL that I use to launch the actual app and hand that to somebody. Hmm. This can be really good if I am you know, working on a new feature uh, and I want to get the product manager's feedback because maybe I've gone in a slightly different direction than what was outlined, but I think it's really good. I think it's an important, better direction. But before I go and merge that in, um, it's a bit of a risky change. I'm going to send this URL to the product manager and just say, hey, what do you think? I went a little bit off to the left, but is it good? And if they like it, great, I merge it in. And if they don't like it, then I don't have to merge it. In fact, frankly, I could just destroy this workspace and start a new workspace and go over again. Uh, so it's a really nice kind of disposable way to try out new ideas. Low effort, low impact, easy for collaboration. Um, so that's kind of the, the main way that, that people kind of go through the, the solution. And you can embed these links, mm -hmm. of course, in, in other places, like for example, could drop it into a Jira here. Um, we have a plugin actually for both Jira and Microsoft VSTS so that it automatically creates um, these tailored URLs for the workspaces and then drops them right into the issues. As a developer, then I come in, start progress, click the link, and I'm off to the races. So what this seems to do is kind of is take really what you get from a GitHub or you know, another service um, 
and bring it into your own environment to provide a lot more richness. For example, the ability to kind of collaborate on the code itself in the container. Yeah, I think so. And I think the other big aspect here is the marrying of the source code and the runtime. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think up until this point, those have always been kind of divorced aspects. The developers mm -hmm. have had great control over the source code, but you know, often the runtime is just something that they pull down and each individual developer does it their own way. And that's why we get into these situations where, hey, it runs on my machine. Why doesn't it run on yours? They're not exactly the same. We each did our own little thing. When you marry these two things together, you can kind of say, as the source code progresses, the runtime progresses with it. Everybody's on the same page in lockstep. Now, within my own workspace, of course, I could choose to make runtime changes independent of everybody else, experiment with some new things. But it gives you a way to kind of tie everyone together. Excellent. Now, the second way you can use these um, uh, is really kind of as a diagnostic tool. So. Another example I have here is a CI build failed. Um, this is something that happens from time to time, unfortunately. Uh, and typically, of course, a developer would come in here and they'd have to figure out, well, what, the, what was the project, which was the branch, what was the commit ID, what infrastructure changes. They'd have to kind of stash the work that they're working on now and create a, an environment in which they can um, diagnose and fix this build failure. But because these... Code NV workspace definitions can be created programmatically and interacted with as the, as the direct JSON. It means that we can create these on the fly. So we actually can respond to a webhook in the CI, query it to say, you know, what project, what branch, what commit ID, what files broke the build, and then create kind of a tailored custom diagnostic workspace that is already synced to exactly that point when the build broke. I click the link, and then just like in the last example, Code Envy is going to open, and I'm going to be able to, you know, go and diagnose this, fix the build, and then I can just close that browser tab when I'm done, and go right back to the work I was doing before, and instantaneous, simple, and uh, kind of all prepackaged. So, what is the pain that this solves for developers? So, I think there's a, a kind of Death by a thousand cuts that's happening to developers today where each individual time they configure a workspace, it doesn't seem like that big a deal, but you end up having to do it really quite frequently. And it's getting worse and worse because today developers aren't just spending the day working on one single project. They're working on multiple projects across multiple branches, sometimes across multiple versions. Mm -hmm. And it's especially painful when you're talking about trying to do something like working on one project with the Java 7 and Maven and another project, which is Java 8 and Gradle. It's kind of nightmarish to get you know, your class path set up and flipped around and all the infrastructure for Gradle and Maven set up so that you can do those two things at all efficiently. Hmm. Versus clicking a link on one, clicking a link on the other, they open their own browser tabs, they're already isolated, they're already kind of clean roomed, and, uh, and you can flip between them at will. Excellent. Well, Brad, thank you very much for taking some time to give us a quick overview of Code Envy. Uh, there's a lot more to explore here. Where can people learn more? So the best thing to do is, of course, to head to our website, um, codeenvy.com, and you can explore a lot more about the solution, about the technical underpinnings, uh, about how to use it. And the other thing you can do if it's kind of an individual is you can dig deeper into the technology by going to the Eclipse Che project. Um, and that is eclipse.org slash J. And that often includes uh, a little bit deeper technical information as well as, uh, of course, links to the open source code for that. Well, great, Brad. Well, thanks a lot. We're always interested in what you guys are doing over at Code Envy. And so appreciate your time and look forward to following up soon. Thanks for the opportunity, Alex. It was great to speak to you. Thanks.